Now, as you can see, probably from the picture, yeah, it's chemicals day. <laughs> um, I was only going to do about a one-minute video, because I was, I've searched for years for them, couldn't find them. Somebody else, I made a video asking, and I honestly, I'm sorry, because I can't remember who it was actually found the link to the company that sells, sells them, um, but, uh, I posted a video a while back, syringes, and not the kind, you know, surgical syringes that have the tips that are replaceable and whatnot. I, I was looking for a syringe specifically to, and that's probably the one chemical I forgot to put down here. <laughs> Let me reach up here in the drawer and pull a tube down uh, to put this Dow Corning, or Dow Corning, uh, 340, which is a, a silicone heat transfer compound. I use, and it, you know, this is heavy, so you can tell there's a shitload of zinc in this stuff, man. It's all like a block of metal. <laughs> um, but anyhow, it's not convenient for me to dispense this stuff out of this gigantic metal. You know, it's in a metal tube to start with, and like I say, it weighs a lot. And even if I put one of those, like, silicone snorkel tubes on it, it's still not convenient. So, for years, I've been using one of these. Um, originally, it had some type of gun grease in it, because I'm a gun nut you know, among the gazillion other things that I collect, guns are another thing that I collect, um, and, you know, I reload, but, uh, anyhow, I got gun grease in these, and I was, what I was looking for was the manufacturer, or just somebody that sold these things empty, because a tube of this stuff, the gun grease that comes in them, my God, it probably lasts me 10 years, I use an almost microscopic amount when I'm rebuilding or fine-tuning trigger assemblies, um, so, you know, it took me God knows how many years to empty this tube out until I finally had an empty one, cleaned it out, and I filled it with, you know, the Dow Corning. Now, the reason I like this is, because anybody that's ever used, uh, you know, one of these syringes, you know, with flux or, you know, any other compound then it's probably familiar with, you push the plunger in, in a normal syringe, and a lot of times it'll keep oozing out a little bit, because you got to remember, it's a rubber, rubber seals there, so it's holding and it, it will hold a little bit of pressure down instead of just releasing back the whole way, so it continues to ooze out the tip a little bit. Well, that might not be too bad with flux or some stuff, but this stuff, well, this stuff, it's like, uh, uh, what do you, uh, crap, anti-seize. I call it jump grease, you know, because it jumps off whatever you put it on all over you, and it spreads like the plague, you know. <laughs> This grease is just odd, and then, and then you're left with this white crap, and everything you touch has little white fingerprints all over it. So, I really like these because they close. You can see the O-ring there in the end, and then when I get down to the end, now, yeah, it's a pain in the butt for me to refill these. What I'll do is uh, uh, take the end off, you know, once it's empty, I pull the plunger back out, and I do take one of those silicone, you know, snorkels, and you go buy a tube of silicone, you know, glue, comes with those extension tubes, and I stick that down in there, and I squeeze, and you know, pull this out as it fill, fills it up. But I get it up in here, and then put the plunger back in. And then, you know, but they're reusable. But I know what's going to happen, because eventually this is going to wear out. Something's going to happen to it. And then I'm going to be screwed. I'm not going to have one. So I made that video. Somebody was kind enough to find. They actually found the company. I searched unsuccessfully. And the company... It's in Canada, so, you know, it wasn't, wasn't in this country. I didn't, and I didn't care, because these cost, what, uh, $5.95 Canadian apiece. I bought a dozen of them, but there's the company. So, it's got their web address on there. It's 4th Gen Tactical, and of course, since I'm a gun nut, I couldn't just buy a dozen syringes, even at five ninety five Canadian. I was like, man, because, God forbid bid the supply of them ever dry up, so I'd rather just buy a dozen of them, have them for the rest of my life, and then if I need them, I've got them. But uh, that's who I got them from. And thanks to the other YouTuber that actually found this company that sold these syringes, these resealable syringes. So I got four of them here, because these four will be staying at this bench, and I took the, I already took the other ones and uh, in another room, put them with all my gun cleaning stuff, because I'll be filling those some of those with grease. But yeah, there they are new. And I had the choice of getting them with white tubes, um, you know, opaque like this, or, you know, the clear ones like that I already have. So there they are, brand new, freshly delivered by the mailman today. 
So thank you very much for finding that. I greatly appreciate that. Now, I was just going to show these and say thank you for finding them. But I got to thinking about it. Chemicals. Um, shop chemicals. So, <laughs> as you can see, I have... I basically only have on the bench what I can fit right here and get it in camera view. Because, <laughs> I, trust me, I mean, if I go out to the garage, God, I've got... I probably have... 2,000 gallons. If you were to put all the chemicals and everything that I have together, God, I've probably got the... Uh, yeah, I'm I, I'm a hazmat disaster waiting to happen, probably. They'll keep everything in flammable cabinets with the automatically automatic closing doors and whatnot out in the garage. You know, out in the garages, but, uh, you know, yeah, I've got all kinds of chemicals. So... I thought I'd go over some of them, because some, especially if you're starting out in electronics, and I often get people ask me, what do I use to clean radios? How do I do this? How do I do that? Well, you know, how do you glue that part back together? How did you get that glue residue off the outside of the radio? So I'll go over some of it. Um, glues. Well, let's see here. Let's grab some glues. Let's see. You know, we've got regular testers models cement. So if you're gluing plastics, this stuff works great. It glues models together. So... You know, that's always a handy glue to have. Uh, my favorite glue, if I can find the damn bottle, oh, it's over here, is Ambro, or Ambroid Pro Weld. So this is, and I don't really call this a glue, I call this a solvent, because it kind of works the same as like uh, with P PCV cement. Um, uh, it melts the two pieces, because they, you can see it's, they don't actually call it glue either. They call it professional plastic welder, because that's actually what it does. It welds the two pieces of plastic back together, because it melts them, and this just then basically evaporates away. It doesn't, you know, you can, I can, I've done that before, you know, put some on my fingernail, and blow, and you can see it just evaporates. There's no, there's nothing left. So... It's just a solvent is all it is, but it's a really, really strong solvent, and it does, it melts the plastic, and then the two pieces fuse back together, and it's extremely strong, surprisingly. It works really, really well. Pick this up at the, I've got a local hobby shop that I can get this stuff at. Um, another glue that I've come to really like is Loctite's go-to glue. Um, it's, what do I want to say, it's stronger or denser than silicone, but it's not like a lot of the glues that dry rock hard. This still maintains a rubbery texture, but it's got a really good holding power. I use this shit for everything nowadays. I keep, like, at least two tubes, usually, and once I get down to where I use the second to last tube, I go out and buy several more to have them on hand, because I go through a lot of this stuff. I really, really like it. And... Let me get it out of the way before anybody asks. No, I'm not being paid by anybody to advertise any of this shit. This is just stuff that I've picked up over decades or you're using or stuff that even I recently found and just really like. But, uh, you know, it's just stuff that I use. I'm not being supported by anybody. You know, <laughs> it, it is, it's just what I use. Uh, yeah, I'm not fortunate enough to have any advertisers or supporters or shit like that. Yeah, it's... Uh, let's see, what other glues do we have? Gorilla Glue. There's their Super Glue Gel. I really like Gorilla Glue, when I'm because I also do woodworking, metalworking. There's not much of anything I don't do, <laughs> which is my curse. But uh, I use their wood glue, and then they came out with this, their, their Super Glue Gel. I really like it. Now, it says right there, Gel, Shake Well. And I can tell you, you can see it kind of separates almost. I don't know what's up with that, which doesn't bother me, because... That's all you got to shake it. Shake it about that much, and it's mixed up just fine. And I love this stuff. Works really well. It's a, a fairly thick, but not too thick, um, gel. I've, I've come to really appreciate that stuff. Um, any other glues? Oh, man, yeah, there's actually some hiding back here. Um, epoxy. Uh, I've been using this stuff, Christ, for probably over 20 years or more. Um, probably 30 years. PC7 epoxy. It's a two-part epoxy. It has an A, A and a B component. Mix them together. It's a you know fairly thick paste. Works really, really well. It's kind of a you know it's black. One's black and one's kind of a really light, almost cream color. And then when you mix them together, it's kind of a dark gray is the color you end up with. But that's great for void filling and epoxying things back together. Um, and actually, it's something I didn't I forgot to put on the bench. Let me reach over here and grab some. Okay, some other gluing products. Of course, nobody will ever forget JB Weld. I mean, this is 
you know, this is the big, the big tubes, as much as that kind of stuff that I go through. I don't bother with those little small tubes. You know, JB Weld, <laughs> buy that anywhere. Um, more Loctite products would be their, their epoxies. Now, these are liquids. Um, you know, they come in the little squeeze bottles, okay? So it has the resin and the hardener. Now, there's two different ones here. There's the heavy duty, and you can see five minute, and then there's the extra time, which is 60 minutes. So if you got something where you need a lot of work time moving the parts around, use the extended time. For the majority of what I do, I just use the regular five minute set. That way I can mix it, put it together, and it sets in about five minutes, so I don't have to wait all damn day, you know, or an hour at minimum, you know, for it to set up. But like I say, there are times where the extra time is extremely handy. Uh, okay. Actually, what I should do is move some of this shit off of here while I'm, <laughs> you know, get it out of the way. Um, yeah, gas and oil resistant seal all. How you can seal gas tanks with this stuff. This is another another product I like. We're rare applications, but there are times I like I like to you know have something like that. It's basically petroleum resistant. Um, amazing goop. That's another one. Really strong, super rubbery stuff. Um, hell, you can glue the soles back on your shoes with this stuff. Uh, and smells to high heaven. Holy crap, the solvent or carrier in this stuff. Woo, yeah, you're definitely not in an enclosed room type deals, but works really well. Um, and I guess we'll just start on one side and kind of work around here. So, here's some other products I use. These are from Z-Rust. you got gun cleaner and gun oil. You say, why in the hell do you have gun cleaner and gun oil on your electronics bench? Well, I work on old radios. There's a lot of rusty parts and it's no different than a gun. Stuff gets gunked up, seized together. And Z-Rust, they make uh, anti-rust products, you know, or corrosion inhibitors um, work really well. I like their cleaner. It's great for cleaning up, you know, gunky metal surfaces. Um, of course, the gun cleaner is good for carbony type stuff. So if you had an arcing, you know, a component arced out, you're trying to clean a chassis, this is good for getting that kind of carbony residue off of the chassis because it dissolves stuff like that. You know, their gun oil, it's a good... Uh, Another thing I like about the Z-Rust is, you can see it's made with biodegradable oils. So, you know, I try to be environmentally conscious. I mean, even though as hazardous as the <laughs> shit you see on this bench is, the majority of the time, there's nothing you can do about that. It's just, the good stuff is hazardous. Just use it with care. But if I have a choice and I find a product that is environmentally friendly, I always try to use it. And I, you know, I support companies that do as well. So, you know, they make really good products. So, you know, I, I, I enjoy using them. Um, now, granted, this isn't really a chemical, but I use. You see these me using these things all the time. They're from Bench Dog. Or is it Bench Dog Tools? They're bench cookies. Um, great. It's basically a hockey puck with any slip, you know, drawer liner glued to both sides. Yeah, you could make your own out of little wooden blocks or or hockey pucks for that matter. Um, but why? They they make them. They're cheap. I have probably. I, hell, I don't know, 12, 15 tubes of these things. Not all in this room. I've got them in the woodworking shop because that's what they're actually designed for, you know, for, you know, great for holding stuff down when you're routing or sanding, but they're great for setting radios up on when I'm working on old tube radios and have the bottom of the chassis off. I don't want to set it directly down on the bench because that restricts airflow, so I can set one of these on each corner. That allows air to circulate up underneath the chassis. Um, of course, deoxid products. Absolutely love Deoxit. They're Deoxit Gold, they're Deoxit uh, D Series, which is the cleaner, the S, which is the shield. Um, now, they're, the numbering is the percentage of actual product. The rest of what's in, like, this can is, is the carrier. So, there's only 5% in these spray cans, but you can get, you know, like, here's the D100. This is the, you know, the cleaner. Um, now, I use the little... Finger, fingernail brush bottle here, the S100. I use that for like wafer switches, and this stuff is expensive, so you know I can buy the big bottle for the price of like what two or three of these small bottles and get a hell of a lot more product. So you know, once I had one of these, I just every time this gets empty, I just fill it out of the larger bottle. Um, their fader lube is great because you know if you work on equalizers or anything that has the slide potentiometers, that's specifically what these are meant for. You know, guys in the audio trade, you know, uh, band equipment and that type of stuff. Their their fader lube uh, solution is is a great product. Um, going around here, chem wipes. 
you're always needing a little little small wipes. It's basically like the half the size of a Kleenex, and they're low linting. I use these all the time. I buy these things by the case. I go through so many of them. Yeah, they're light, and they don't, you know, but it's only just enough to suck up or apply a little bit of alcohol to to dampen a spot to get up some flux. I just go through these things by the case full. Um, cleaners, you know, like here's, and I, I pick stuff up at industrial auctions, eBay, anywhere I can when I can get a bargain on something. And a lot of stuff, it really doesn't matter brand because they're all pretty much the same thing. A lot of electrical cleaners, you know, like Max Pro, here's Misty, you know, this is a commercial, a commercial grade one. This one's more, I guess, marketed towards home, hairy homeowners where this one here, this, I'm, I'm familiar with that brand. They're more of an industrial type company. Um, you know, bottle of Old English. It's great stuff, man. You're cleaning, cleaning up a radio cabinet. It's got a scratch or a nick. Old English. I've been using this stuff since I was a kid. Uh, another product I forgot to put down on the bench. Let me reach up here and grab it. Uh, actually, two products. <laughs> One, shoe polish. Mike, why in the hell do you have shoe polish on your electronics bench? Same thing. CB radios, or actually ham radios, anything that has black covers, especially like if you've taken the, the somebody had double-sided sticky tape on there or something, and it might be sun-faded a little bit, black shoe polish does wonders for, for kind of cleaning up and blending faded areas, you know, back together, or sun-dried and baked. You'd be surprised what black shoe polish will do for something. I'm serious. Go out and get yourself a can. Man, it works wonders. Been using this stuff since I was in the Army. And I did, trust me, did my share of spit shine and boots. And, of course, you can get it in different colors. So, you know, brown shoe polish. This also works great on wood. So, you know, wood end panels. The brown shoe polish. And then, of course, since it's brown, it makes a great scratch filler. Uh, if you just want to wax something, the old Johnson's Paste Wax. It's good for hardwood floors. It works great on radio cabinets. Works great on everything. Uh, let's see what we got here. Chemtronics. I've got all kinds of Chemtronics products. You know, Tuner Renews, a tuner cleaner. Yeah, that one's based more for, like, uh, television tuners and whatnot. But, you know, Flux Remover. Don't use a lot of Flux, your actual Flux Remover anymore. I mainly use... 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. That's about the 90, probably 99.9% .9 of the flux removal I do is with 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. <laughs> and I buy it, comes in this, I well, actually don't buy it in these. I bought one of these spray bottles, and now what I do is, is I just buy gallon jugs of it and refill this container then. But it makes a handy dispenser in the spray can. But, you know, they have the... This stuff is really expensive. Christ, I can buy a gallon or more of isopropyl alcohol for the can of one of these. Oh, what the hell is this? How many ounce cans this is? You know, 10 ounce can. Um, metal polish. A lot of people seem to be under the impression that you, you know, the chrome that's on radios, like CB radios and whatnot on the plastic bezels, isn't chrome. No, it's, it's chrome. It's real chrome. You can chrome plate anything. Um... If you use the proper basis to it, you can literally chrome anything. So if you've got a CB radio or something that's got a chrome bezel on it and it's starting to look kind of faded, metal polish. This is, you know, I've got experience as a heavy uh, tractor trailer mechanic. I used to be a heavy truck mechanic years ago. I spent my share, fair share of time also around big trucks and truck drivers with lots of chrome and stainless steel. So, you know, I'm familiar with a lot of the polishing products. And if you stop by any truck shop, man, you can get some of the best metal polishes in the world. Now, I think this one is probably the best. Um, now, it didn't used to, I don't even know if this company's in business anymore, honestly. It used to be one that was pronounced water, but it was spelled like O-U-T-E-R or something like that. They went out of business, this company started to make it, but it comes in, it's actually like cotton, and it's impregnated with a, like a powder, and then what they use, and this is dry, I can feel it, yeah, I can't smell any solvent in there anymore, so this doesn't work right now. But all I do is is re-moisten that, this whole you know thing here. All I need to do is put a few drops of mineral spirits down in there, let it sit for a little while, and it re-moistens it. It never, you know, eat the, that's just there for the moistening of it, or, you know, but the powder is still in there. And this, man, you'd be surprised. A piece this big 
could polish an entire entire tractor trailer rim. You know, a 22.5 rim or you know a 19.5 rim. That tiny little it just goes and it lasts forever. I mean, it's it's a, it's a, it was expensive as shit, but it's just amazing stuff. I really you know, I can't say enough about you know their pro. Like I said, I don't I I think there's actually they've got a new. I think they are because a friend of mine. What is that? Hulcher Enterprises in Denton, Texas. If anybody wants to look that up, made in the USA. But uh, I think a friend of mine's got got a towing company. Actually, just bought a case of this not too long ago. So I think they're still around. Um, Mother's Renew lens. Got a box back here. Great for cleaning meter lenses. You know, clear any type of clear lenses. Um, what not. You know, it's got the little sanding pads and the buff ball and then the polishing compounds in there. But, uh, you see it's well used. You know, it just sticks on a drill. But, uh, great product. That's what I use to clean meter, you know, buff up and take scratches out of meter lenses. You know, I'll sand them down. Um, and then end up going down to the polishing compound. Even some of my test equipment meters and whatnot, if I get old vacuum tube voltmeters that have, you know, the meter faces on those things have been abused for the last 40, 50, 60, God, you know, 70 years, whatever. Great stuff for cleaning up. You know, headlight, it's basically just a headlight. You see, headlight renewal kit. Well, headlight renewal kits also work great on meter faces. Um, you know, all kinds of greases. You know, here's a synthetic super lube grease. This stuff works really well. Um, yeah, you know, this has a uh, PTFE in it. They call it, they've got their trademark name, what's sin colon, <laughs> but it's just PTFE, um, you know, lubricant in there. But it's a really good grease, good long term because it's a, you know, it's synthetic. Um, you know, more cleaners, goo gone, goof off, um, you know, more great products. This one's like a citrus based one. Actually, it is, it says right there, citrus power. This one, yeah, this one will strip paint off, so you got to be careful with some of these things. When they tell you, you know, test in an inconspicuous area, definitely always test in an inconspicuous area. Especially if you're working on a customer's radio, the last thing you want to do is is be trying to get some sticker residue off the faceplate and wipe the rag across it, and you just took all the silk screening <laughs> off the face of the customer's radio. So be careful when you're using cleaners like that. Um, a safe one for cleaning sticker residue off is... Bronsonol, or you can get Zippo lighter fluid, but here's, and that's naphtha. You can see it contains naphtha. That's all that is. It just comes in a convenient dispenser bottle. But you may, I, you know, I used to smoke, and thank God I finally quit. You know, it killed my father, and I quit before it killed me. <laughs> but uh, you know, and I used to carry a Zippo. Um, but like I say, I've I've been using this stuff for years. Great cleaner, get it everywhere. Um, probably my favorite glass cleaner, Zep. Zip makes, they're, they're an industrial company, you know, industrial type products, but they're trying to break, I guess, break into the homeowner style market, and you can now get this at Lowe's. So if you go to the Lowe's, you know, then the cleaning aisle, they have all the cleaning products, they have an area that has Zep products. I love Zep products. I've been using, you know, their industrial line of stuff for years, but this foaming glass cleaner, man, this stuff really works good. It doesn't streak. It smells really good, but I like the foaming action because that way I don't spray it on something and it all just runs off. The foam sticks sticks a little bit longer, so that's a nice product. You know, have dispensing, you know, as far as dispensing goes. Get yourself some of these snorkel bottles. This one's starting to wear off. I need to write it on there again, but this is just steam distilled H2O or water. I use that for you know, re-moistening my sponge on my desoldering and soldering iron stands, um, filling up my marsh tape dispenser, the little water reservoirs and those things. I, you know, sometimes I might use that. You never know when you might need some water. Um, let's see here. Yeah, this is a nasty mixture here. This has got one 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 trichloroethane or ethane, tri trichlor tetrafluorethane and trichlorofluoromethane. Um, this was a tuner cleaner, the kind of tune, the good tuner cleaners that used to be around, uh, that are illegal nowadays because they're horribly ozone depleting because they're chlorofluorocarbons. Um, cause you can see there's flora, meth everything in here is flora or chlora. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, this stuff eats the ozone out of the atmosphere like nobody's business. But, uh, I use these chemical resistant bottles. But uh, this came in a spray can, is what this actually originally came in, the liquid that's in here. And what I did was, is just, you know, basically took the old spray cans, and I still have, not this, but I still have like uh, six or seven original, 
and it's the big cans, man. They're like, you know, way up here, like 24 ounce professional cans you used to be able to get back in the day. But, uh, and I just spray the can into this, this glass bottle here and then use it. Now, what I use this for is if I get transformer cores that are stuck, you know, the, the little uh, ferrite core adjustable cores and like IF transformers, the they seal those with wax. Well, if I get one, I just, oh, man, I don't want to crack it. You know, I'm starting to back it out. And that and they use, especially if they use paraffin wax, the hard wax, I'll take a, you know, an old straw out of a, from a spray can, you know, like this, you know, one that would go in a spray can nozzle. I just stick that down in there, put my finger over it, and I put a few drops of this down in it, and it dissolves the wax, but it does not damage plastic. That's one of the nice things about this. And I don't feel too bad using it because... I'm depleting the ozone in such a small amount because I'm literally only using like one or two drops every once in a while. This bottle will probably last me as much as it's in here 10 to 20 years. I mean, I may never need to refill it, <laughs> you know, but maybe once or twice, maybe more in my life. Um, yeah, I'm very, very sparingly because like I say, you just can't get these good, these tuner cleaners that used to be around. They're just not, they're not available anymore for good reason. Um... You know, I've got, I buy these little needle bottles. You get these things on, on eBay, but, you know, I've got different gear oils in here. It, I had it written on there. It was starting to rub off, but I know what's in here. You know, this is the, and all of, all of my oils and stuff like that and greases, I'd use Texas Refinery Corporation. I used to be a sales rep for them at one time. Probably the, some of the best lubricant products on the planet. I mean, stuff like this. They're Paragon 3000 grease. This stuff, you know, the tubes have been cut down as I use it, but it's a real stringy grease. And man, there's you find another grease in this price range that can beat the specs of this. You send me a tube of it, and I'll eat it. <laughs> it's that good. They're just they they use this at CERN. <laughs> that's how good it is. You know the uh, particle accelerator. That's how good it is. That's this stuff is actually used at CERN at their particle accelerator. But really, really ultra high quality products and made in Fort Worth, Texas. You know. But I've got oh god, I don't know how many you know drums and buckets of their gear oils and whatnot. I put you know I I need occasionally small amounts of oil and I then you know, like I say they're really high quality oils. You know, this is a, a UTF fluid or universal tractor fluid, but I like it because it's tacky. It's a very stringy oil, and same thing with this. This gear oil here, this is one of their very stringy and cohesive oils. Um, you know, other dispensal bot dispenser bottles I have, Plato makes these um, little needle tip bottles. Actually, that's a syringe tip under there, under the cap, down inside it. You can see that's actually, so you can put whatever size syringe tip you want down under there, but... Uh, you know, I've got some of my homemade flux in there. Um, I, this one's just nothing but isopropyl alcohol. I've got other ones that have other cleaners or distilled. Uh, that's another one I should reach up. I forgot to stick down here. Ah, distilled white vinegar. Um, but, you know, really nice bottles for that. Distilled white vinegar. Have you ever had a transistor radio or a walkie-talkie or something that somebody forgot to take the alkaline batteries out and... They started to leak distilled vinegar. This is an acid. You put a few drops of this on those corroded battery terminals, you'll start to see the foaming action. Well, you know, it's the you get into the pH level. They're opposite. They're at opposite ends of the pH scale, and they basically neutralize each other. But you'll see it when you dribble this onto anywhere where there's an alkaline battery leak. It'll clean all of that crunchy old crap. It's always hard to get off, especially off the spring end. Um, you know, the negative the negative terminal always goes to a spring. It's always impossible to clean all around that coily spring. You just put some white distilled vinegar on there. It'll clean it right off. And then when you're done, flush it out with a little bit of water. Because don't forget, this is an acid. Um, let's see, what else we got here? Radio TV solvent cement. Now you can see this one's not even open. I've got a, I bought a case of this stuff. Um, really strong solvent. But basic, basically the main, main ingredient, acetone. Great great stuff for getting it'll remove anything you got to be careful with it because it is acetone um, great for dissolving uh you know loctite you know screw sealing products um oh well, let's go on around here here's some of my you know, some of the fluxes kingbow this is a paint you know a paste flux take the seal out of there you can see that's a paste flux i actually put that into a syringe that's actually in this one that's what's in this one 
Kingbow. You can see it on there, RMA218 Flux. Um, when I mix up my own liquid flux, that actually I use this, I get this shipped over from Germany. It's a rosin cake. It's pure rosin. I just flake off a bunch of it, put it in one of these bottles, dissolve it with alcohol, and make my own. Um, what else we got here? Probably thinking, why do I have dental floss on the bench? Have you ever had one of those old, big uh, IF transformers? Um, that the, the cardboard tube, originally what they did was they usually have some type of like paint or something or glue that they, a little line that went down inside the cardboard uh, coil form tube. And that's actually what that fire, the then adjustable ferrite core screws up and down and it bites into that. Well, after 50 years of running hot, that stuff dries out and all flakes out. Then your core just falls down to the bottom or falls out. Just take a couple wraps of, you know, take some dental floss. You know, fold it up, and of course it's wax, so it sticks to each other. Just fold it up like four times, get it to stick to each other. And then what you can do is slide that down in that cardboard tube, bring in your ferrite core, and then it'll bite into that. Fast and easy way to fix stripped out uh, transformer core here and IF cans and whatnot. Um, beeswax, I've covered that before. Great for resealing transformers, uh, potting, you know, vibration sensitive components or stuff that's, you know, temperature sensitive. Beeswax, get that on eBay. Um, you know, soldering paste. Now, this is an acid core. I use this, you know. Just, I just had this in here. This is what I'll you know pull a little bit out when I'm doing chassis. When I'm trying to you know solder a something to a steel chassis, I'll use a little bit of this. And then when I'm done, of course, clean all the flux off before I then solder the component on there. But I'll use this to get the the bond of the solder to the steel. And then once I do, then I can just remelt. Use flux solder, and then you solder my my you know wire or or whatever I'm trying to solder down to a steel chassis. Um, Sterret tool, tool oil. I actually use this a good bit, and actually if you use uh, stuff like pasty soldering irons, like these, they have a glass chamber. You can get the cardboard tubes or the reusable glass chambers. Well, I actually, I forget where I read it in one of Pace's literature or something one time. They said about using mineral oil. If you coat, just take a, you know, like a Q-tip and put a light coating of mineral oil on the inside of that glass chamber, the solder won't stick to it anymore. It makes, and it does. It works so great. So that's why I have a bottle of Sterret tool, tool oil, because that's all this is, is highly refined mineral oil. Um, some other oddball stuff I use here is a high temperature silicone conformal coating. So if I want to, you know, completely encase something, try and make it weather resistant, you know, this is good and it's high temperature. Um, it's also great if you have traces that are starting to get lifted off of a circuit board. You can just spray this on. Basically, it will glue them back down. And somebody's at the door. I'll be right back. Just hold on a second. And I'm back. Yeah, that was the FedEx man dropping off more packages. <laughs> uh, actually, because I'm, I'm just thinking to myself, man, I'm thirsty. You know the absolute most important chemical I have on my bench every single you know, seven days a week here? Coffee. Uh -huh. There is no more important chemical than coffee. <laughs> Okay, back to it. I don't remember what chemical I left off with. I was over here somewhere. Uh, let's see, I think it was a solder and flux. Um, here's another one. I got a bunch of these. These are old, and of course these are more of those. Yeah, definitely. Well, they're not. It, it's not that it's illegal, but they don't make stuff like this anymore because you can see what's in there. Trichloromonofluoromethane. So yeah, chlorine, fluor. You know, fl anytime you see a, a methane or a chloro in a chemical compound, yeah, it's ozone depleting, but Obviously, it's a fire extinguisher. I'm only going to use this in an absolute emergency. And I have, God, I got, I think it was a case of 100. I've got 10 of them here at the bench. But they're just spray cans. They're handy little, that's why they're nice. They're just little, little spray cans. So if I were to have a little small fire, because this leaves absolutely no residue whatsoever. So if I had some type of little small fire, I can do this, and I don't have to worry about all that damn yellow powder out of a normal ABC fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher. Um, and you can see what a what he had him marked at a dollar a can. So yeah, I bought the. I think there's a hundred of them I got. But yeah, I've got these things spread all over the place, shops, garages, the house. Yeah, they're just. I've got them scattered all over the place. Uh, of course, I have the powder. You know, the the big 
uh, 30 pound extinguishers hanging all over the place too, the ABC dry chemicals. But like I say, if I had a small fire, especially like I said, that powder, if you've ever had to try to clean that shit up. <laughs> um, let's see, what else do we got here? Vinyl off. I love this stuff. This, this is meant for people that install vinyl decals on vehicles. Well, it's also meant for them to take old decals off. You spray this on to a vinyl decal and just let it on there for a while. It actually soaks through the vinyl and softens up the glue underneath of it, and you can just peel it off. Amazing stuff. If you stop by, where I get this at is, uh, I buy it in a gallon jug, and I just, this was a sample bottle I got. I tried it, I loved it, I got a gallon of it, and I just refill this little spray bottle because it's convenient for me here. So when I need to remove stickers, this stuff works great. Like I say, just spray it on, let it soak for a while. It doesn't, doesn't happen fast, but you know, it's not like you're going to be three days, but just follow the directions. But yeah, you can just peel the labels right off. It just it softens the glue underneath of the label as it soaks through it. Um, Kano Croil. Aha! Some people love it. Some people can't stand it. <laughs> some people, the reason some people can't stand it is they can't stand the smell. Um, I personally absolutely love the smell of Croil. Um, and if you're a gun nut, this is also very handy. Um, if you buy a JB Borbright, I know this is off the electronics topic, but if you uh, if you're if you do a long range shooting like I do, um, you know from 300 yards out to a you know a thousand yards, um, you know like all my 338 Lapuas, all my long range, my 50 BMGs, I've polished the bores of all of those. Uh, I'm not going to get into how you polish bores, but I buy JB Bore Compound polishing compound, and this is what I use for the oil. Um, you know, I'll, I'll moist, moisten a bunch of patches with the, with this and then apply the JB Bore compound. Works really well. But it's a great rust penetrant. And it says it's the oil that creeps. It does. It works really well. I've been using this stuff for pff, as long as I can remember. I think I probably literally had my first can like this when I was a little kid somewhere. I got one. I've been using it for years. They have silicoil. They've got a whole line of stuff. It's not... Not extremely expensive, but it's not the cheap stuff. You're going to pay for it, but, you know, they're in Nashville, Tennessee. But really, really good products made by Kino Laboratories. Can't say enough about them. Um, you know, it never hurts to have some spray oil. Of course, I'm a gun nut, so, you know, I've got gun, gun oils all over the place. You know, Remington, they're Rem Oil. And this is a Teflon lubricant. That's a handy one. Um, what electronic shop would be complete without free spray? Um, you know, I just... You can see see the ice form on my hands. Don't want to do that too long or I'll literally get frostbite. But yeah, the, <laughs> you can see there's the frost there on the end. And what this is is a piece of heat shrink tubing. I did that so because when you're trying to find a component that malfunctions when it's hot, well, when you just spray it with a straw, you're spraying it everywhere. Well, yeah, the problem goes away. And then you wait for the problem for the parts to heat up and the problem comes back and you spray that. Well, but which specific component is it? that's going bad. So what I did was is basically made a little funnel on the end of this. And the reason it's on, I can slide that over a transistor and then spray just that transistor and freeze individual components at a time. So just a little tip. Um, here's a really handy doohickeys. They're obviously where these come from. You can see China, <laughs> but they're refillable spray cans. So I've got a small compressor under the bench um, I don't need my gigantic Ingersoll Rand three-phase one um, in here in the electronics shop. So I've just got a little small one. You know, I've got a spray nozzle on it. But if I need just even a less amount of air, because this is meant to have chemicals in it. Cleaners, brake cleaner, whatnot. You can put any chemical you want in it. They're, you know, they're chemical resistant. Because you can see it's a metal can. It's an aluminum can. But uh, they're refillable. I just use these as just portable air can. So there's just nothing but literally the air out of this room <laughs> in this can here. I just fire up the compressor. Just the, has a normal. That's how you fill these things. So you know, Normally, if I were to let all the air out of this thing, it is fairly low. And you can use, of course, for chemicals. I could put any of my chemicals in here if I were so inclined. But, you know, you can just unscrew it. You know, you'd fill it with your chemical. Screw the lid back on. And then you just, with a, you know, a tire inflating valve, you just refill it. And I got written on there, it's just in case this label gets rubbed off, I've written it on, on here and on the bottom. Just up to 90 PSI. 
But uh, they work great. It's FIT fit, you know, auto repair tools. Or, yeah, MIT, FIT tools. But uh, you stop in some Napa stores, the catalogs, they'll have stuff like this too. But I bought, I think I probably got this one on eBay. But, uh, you know, they also have the multifunction. So it has a, a sprayer right there, like a, a normal spray paint can type sprayer. But then if you flip this stainless steel nozzle up, then it has the precision sprayer there. But like I said, I just there's no chemicals in here. I just fill it up with compressed air out of the room. And it just makes, a like I say, a nice precision little air, air blow gun. And, of course, it's one hell of a lot cheaper than buying those blasted cans of air. Because, oh my god, it, how much does air cost? Am I missing something here? I mean, I... The air that I'm breathing, the last time I checked, didn't cost anything. And I understand companies have to make a profit, but the price they charge for compressed air, I've got to wonder, is there gold dust in there that I'm missing or some other rare element? You know, is they filled with plutonium? I mean, what the hell are those cans of air cost so damn much for it? Well, I found the, the solution to that. These. <laughs> now, now, if... I don't want to don't want to get a bunch of people complaining because they're going to rush out and buy these things and find out that yeah, but it hardly lasts any. That's true. Those cans, when you shake them, you're going to find there's a it's a liquid. There's a, you know it's a propellant. It's compressed liquid, which you know it at at atmospheric pressure it's a gas. So this is just the air that's in your room filling the can. So it doesn't last a long time. Now this was meant, it wasn't meant to be a, a blow gun, it was meant to be a, you know, put spray paint or brake cleaner or something in here. And you'd, you know, fill it about halfway with that, and then the other half would be air pressure. And that's fine, but when you fill it with just air, yeah, you're going to run out. It's not going to, you're not going to stand here and get it anywhere close to as much use out of one of these as you do one of those, re, you know, uh, can of airs that you buy at the, you know, stationary store. But I don't mind having to refill the can. Because, like I said, I just reach down, grab the fill gun, and psh, and it's full again. So, um, I think that's covered. I think most of the stuff I got here on the bench. I'm sure I missed some things, um, but like I say, lots of good products. I mean, and you'll find when you start working on electronics or anything, man, you'll you'll start to get one hell of a collection of stuff, and you'll find products that you like, and then you'll find a product later on that works even better. But uh, you know. I thought I'd share... Oh, here's one. Um, I didn't want to forget this. I put this little tube out. It's thermal glue. So occasionally I want to attach a component to the chassis, like a big one of those uh, ceramic or sand block resistors. They make clamps, and a lot of times it's inconvenient. Or I want to glue an actual heat sink to a transistor or to the top of an IC, because some of the old 774 series uh, TTL ICs, they're little toaster oven coils. And I, can, I, I cut out my own. Actually, I have the adhesive kind for certain sizes of ICs, but in other, other ones, I'll actually cut out my own little heat sinks, but I glue them on with a thermal glue. That's what this is. It's a glue, kind of like silicone, but it's kind of like heat sink compound in, is in that it has a lot of, yeah, I guess, metal part, because it, it is a fairly heavy tube, but uh, it's meant to be thermally conductive, so I don't didn't want to. That's why I specifically put this on the bench. I didn't want to forget to mention that. So uh, there's just some of the chemicals I use on a daily basis, and pretty much everything you have seen, I would uh, highly recommend because I use them all, and I use them for a reason. They work well. Um, so there you go. There's just a few of the chemicals on my bench.